So um, first, another round of applause for our hosts who were very gracious to provide us with the space and they bought the food, so <laughs> food and the beer. So I'm first up, but before I get started on that, is there anybody who has an announcement or um, anybody hiring, anybody looking for work, that kind of thing? Yes. Try this. Thank you. My name is Ali Maromi. Uh, we are a startup company building a state-of-the-art platform for data analytics. Uh, we are looking for advanced art developer, uh, experience in developing packages, uh, parallel processing is, is, is desired. So if you are interested, you can drop a message to carrier at r dash brain dot io our brain r dash brain dot io just just drop a message send your contact then we can discuss about the opportunity the the, the corporation is project based but definitely we are looking for long-term cooperation thank you very much thank you anybody else okay um i'll put this here So what, I, what I'd like to do tonight is to, um, to give you some insight into the, what's happening at the R Consortium. Is there anybody here who has not heard about the R Consortium? All right, so what this is, is a, um, a trade organization, uh, which these companies um, pay dues. I mean, they pay dues to belong to this organization. And its um, mission, is to support the infrastructure around the R language and the R community. So the R, the R Consortium's about a year old. It was announced uh, just before the Use R Conference in June last year. Good, okay. And the way I look at it is, is a way to um, expand the R community and allow corporations who are um, profiting from being able to assume the high quality um, analytics that, you know, infrastructure that R provides, a way for them to join the community and to actually participate in the community by contributing. So this is, you should think of this as a way for corporations to contribute to the open source R effort. Let me go back again. So. Um, just, you can see that um, the R Foundation, the R there means that the R Foundation is a member of the consortium. So the way the, way the consortium works, there's a board of director, directors, and uh, all of the um, top level tier get a seat on the board. For the next layers, the gold and platinum layers, there's a, a formula whereby they vote and elect representatives to the board of directors. But the idea is that there should be representation for all levels. And um, underneath that, there is a, um, a technical committee, and I'll talk about some details about that uh, as we go along here. So you can see it's a pretty big mission. Uh, here's the board of directors. Uh, the board seat rotates every six months. Right now, it's Lou from TIPCO. And here's the uh, Infrastructure Steering Committee. So what this group does is guide projects that are funded by the R Consortium. And what I'm going to describe now are some of the projects that have been funded. So the first project is R Hub. This, this is actually what started the uh, consortium, uh, people thinking about doing something like this about two years ago. So m some of you might remember that there was a temporary um, um, downtime with RForge. So the build system for R was down for, uh, down for some time. And um, what happened was um, a number of people in, in the R, um, both in, in R Core, the R Foundation, and R users thought, you know, what could we do to shore up the infrastructure. 
So this first project, which was actually awarded earlier this year, um, is was an 80K award, and it's very ambitious um, goal is to construct a new, entirely new, modernized build system for R. It'll have some of the, you know, it'll be complementary to CRAN and RForge, but it'll be based on GitHub and, and the kinds of things that people are doing now. Here's the goal for the uh, project, and I encourage you to go to the, to the sites for all these and get involved if you're interested. But at the very least, you know, monitor what's going on. So here's the architecture. The green is what has been done so far in, um, as a prototyping step. And you can see it's pretty, um, it's pretty ambitious as to what will be built out. Recently, in January, there was a second tier of uh, projects that were um, funded. And this one involves um, in improving the DBI interface. So you can see there's a 25K, 80K, 25K. We're talking about real money that's being awarded to individuals or groups of individuals who have an idea that's worthy of, um, of funding because it, it's got a good chance to contribute to the community as a whole. So, this is something that we hope we can um, continue to do at this level and maybe beyond. Another um, project here at, at the 10K level was for workshops uh, for optimization and tooling. And I'm, I'm going to not take the time to explain the details, but I want to give you a feel for what's happening. I'm hopeful that this uh, project, which will um, which will involve localization of R for different languages, will actually contribute to improving the documentation for R. But one of the things that I've noticed is that the number of packages that have vignettes is rather small. Only about 25% of all R packages have vignettes, perhaps because some of that is that um, writing in English like that is, is um, difficult for people around the world, and why shouldn't there be localizations and our literature in other languages? So I think that's a great improvement to the global community. This is a, going to be a series of one-day Saturday um, uh, our conferences, small mini things organized at the local level. It, initially, the, the consortium funded uh, three of these conferences, we'll see how they go. They'll probably all be in Europe, the initial three. Instructor training, so software carpentry um, applied for a grant and they got one and you should see um, uh, some activity there happening already where they're training the trainers. So the idea here is to take people who are already competent in R and teach them how to be better instructors. Um, this is a, a kind of, um, you know, esoteric in the sense that not everybody is interested in spatial statistics, but nevertheless, the, um, the quality of, of, of the proposal and the, you know, the argument for a need in this area was persuasive. So, it's, it's the case, I think this represents the case that the, the consortium is willing to consider ideas from many different fields. And it's not just like plumbing, total plumbing that uh, will be supported. One of the things that I'm really excited about that is in addition to projects that are pretty cut and dry, the consortium has got the notion of forming working groups. So there are many interesting problems that, that require more resources to be done uh, you know, by one person and also really need a consensus um, within the art community in order to be successful. So we see this idea of a working group as a place where people can come and hash out a cooperative solution to a problem or at least, you know, agree to disagree and, and get at the heart of what the underlying issues are. So 
this is a really important thing, I think, for both individuals and companies to try to be involved with. Um, and you'll see in a minute when I talk about the first working groups about what the practical implications are. But the benefits are clear. I mean, you're working, if, you, if you're participating in one of these things, if you identified a problem area that might be of interest to the whole R community, you have a place to talk about these issues and discuss them with relevant experts under the watchful eye, or at least you have the attention of the R Foundation. And you have um, an administrative body that has the resources available to just make the logistics happen. Well, this, this first working group, I think, is going to be the real test case, and I'm hopeful that it's, it will produce something that it's of true, lasting value. So the background on this was about, um, in January uh, 2015, there was a, um, a small one-day conference uh, held at uh, Hewlett-Packard on distributed computing with R, and there were a number of people who talked through a, um, different proposals and the idea was, you know, how should you do, wh what should the interface look like? Um, what should the methods be for doing distributed computing in the R environment? And what, um, what happened was, instead of a working paper, um, Michael Lawrence from R Core, along with um, developers from HP, Andrew, Andrew Roy and uh, Ed Ma, they actually developed an R package. So it's, it's DDR. It's out there in, um, you know, on CRAN. You can download it, and you can use it to do distributed computing with the back end of the R parallel environment, or right now with the um, with the HP database. But the real test is, um, you know, what. So there's two questions here uh, that really need consensus, and the first is, is this the way? Is this sufficient? Um, to do distributed computing. Is it the right way? Is it the thing that the R community will get behind? And hence, the working group is being formed to discuss this. And the second part is, OK, if it is the right way, or at least if it's a valuable way, what should be, um, what back ends? And of course, a prime candidate is Spark. So is Spark the next thing that DDR should sit on top of? And, and to what extent? Does the R community want to get involved with helping to build out the Spark project? I mean, there's, there's no right answer to this kind of thing. It's just exciting stuff. And I hope that the, um, the first, uh, so right now we're recruiting for that working group. If you have an interest, uh, you should contact Michael Lawrence or you can contact me and I'll put you in charge of, uh, you know, touch with Michael Lawrence. Um, and Maybe you can be at the first meeting, which will probably happen sometime in mid-June. Um, the way the working groups are going to work is, so the ISC, the Technical Committee of the R Consortium, uh, will assign a sponsor. In the case of this working group, I'm the sponsor. So my, uh, my job is to convene a group of people that, uh, first off, to find somebody who's, in tr who's the leader of the group. In this case, it's Michael Lawrence and to make sure that, um, you know, monitor how the money's spent, monitor the progress of the group, make sure that there's a clear stopping procedure, that, that we know what the goals are and when, we when to declare a success. So the ISC is kind of in the monitoring position like that. And then the, it's up to the working group themselves to, to make a go at it. And there are two more groups. Uh, one is to build code, code coverage tools. I'll let you read that. Um, this, this group was um, organized as a working group without any funding yet. So there's two levels of being a working group. The DDR uh, actually received a, a 10K of funding in order to get start, started with increasing the number of algorithms that are available for DDR. But um, these, this group and the next one, um, oop, so, um, so this one about APIs. So, you know, what should the R API look like? So, so this is a kind of deep question that um, gets to the very core of the R language. And um, the assertions made 
that it's broader, that the current API is broader than necessary and, and perhaps could be improved on. So uh, exactly the kind of thing that if any progress is going to be made needs a, um, a consensus from the relative, ex you know, the relevant experts. And one of the things I would like to, to do here is to encourage you to think about what projects you know you might want to work on or what projects you could propose and this is the kind of thing that did not get funded so the projects that that we didn't really look at either had been done before or their scope was too small so the kind of things that the R consortium will fund is not something that could be easily done in a package or, or by an individual so that that's working well enough right now so not too specific, but be ambitious and think about what could be, you know, what you could do with some cash or the time, you know, maybe the cash is spent uh, just to support an engineer part time in order to do this. So that, that's the level we should be thinking about. And um, my suggestions are um, along these lines to think about collaborative projects. And that's what I'd like to see. If, if I had my, uh, my vision, um, which I think is partly shared by, by the members of the, the ISC working group, is that the R Consortium could be a place that sets um, standards, at least informal standards for how R can develop and to make sure that as, you know, for the, the next 40 years of ours growth, that there's a sufficient runway in, and support from the infrastructure to keep that happening. And the last thing is that the call for proposals is open now until July 10th. So if you're interested, you should go to the R Consortium website and um, think about contributing, at least um, getting a placeholder for a proposal in there. So what I'd like to do for just a couple of minutes um, is to brainstorm about, I'd like to hear your ideas about projects that you think might be worthy or something that's interesting. Well, let me seed this. So here's one thing that, um, that I have been thinking about is that we really do not have uh, readily available good tools for studying the R infrastructure itself. Uh, one of the hardest problems for a new person is to find R packages. What are the relevant R packages? It might be, it might be worthwhile to try to build a real recommendation system. It's also the case that um, the documentation for many packages is less than it should be. So it's, it's hard to find, you know, when you discover a new package, it's hard to find out, um, you know, exactly what it does. You only have a limited amount of time unless you know the person who wrote the package or it addresses something in your field that you're particularly interested in. You probably, you probably won't put the time into it. So, is there anything that could be done to help improve the documentation within the framework that's done now? Um, one idea well, that, that might be worthy of a consortium project is to have something, you know, when you, when you go on LinkedIn, they tell you um, how well you're doing on your profile. <laughs> it, it might be nice to have something for our packages that at least does that and perhaps could make additional suggestions. So I'm, I, I think that there's plenty of room to reflect on the R infrastructure uh, in, and particularly to figure out how to learn more about what's out there that, that could be worthy of a consortium project. And that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah. So are you talking like building a wiki? Could be. I, I think that might be a, um, you know, I, I'm not speaking for the consortium, I'm, I'm, but I'm, given that what I've seen as a, um, you know, the kinds of things a consortium might be interested in, that kind of thing I think would be well received. 
So we're, we're looking for things that are going to reach a large portion of the art community and have an impact and be sustainable. Uh, something that will help um, not only expert users, perhaps, but newbies. So the, the, you know, the composition of the art community is changing as we reach out to more people in data science fields. Um, it's no longer, uh, you, you can no longer assume that um, a new person has the same level of expertise as one could in the past. And, and I think it's important that for, for R to continue to grow, that we f find a way to make it easier for more people to join the community. I'm also skeptical as to how long the exponential curve of R growth in packages can continue. There are 8,000 packages out there right now. Only 25% have a vignette to tell you what they're about. And you know, is there a value for that continuing that kind of growth if it's not easy to index them? Or, or figure out how they work. I mean, um, last year I tried a very amateurish approach to figure out using some basic sentiment analysis to try to figure out if I could find all the Bayesian packages, and I couldn't. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not easy to do something like that. Um, the um, description fields and packages, you know, there are Bayesian packages that don't mention Bayesian anywhere in there, but they would be of interest to somebody doing Bayesian analysis. So it, it's not a simple problem. Yes? I can't, I can't hear you. Well, that's, um, th that's something that, so the, the, so the question was, you know, the life cycle of packages, they proliferate, and, um, and one, of, um, one thing that I've noticed is that um, people are writing, as people are still probably even more than before, they're writing packages that have overlap with what other people are doing, right? So there's still this idea of working in isolation and maybe the R consortium, if it doesn't do anything else, could help with collaboration. So, so that would be interesting to find out what's going on else in the R world. The other thing is that there is no way right now for a graceful, um, to gracefully retire packages. And I, I don't think, I'm not sure whether that's an R consortium project or whether the R foundation has to do that. Uh, right now, uh, the easiest way to find out that packages have been retired is to monitor Cranberries. Uh, do you know Dirk Edelbutel's site, Cranberries? And you can see he reports that pack, packages that have been decommissioned. But that's, um, that's, you know, that's a rather esoteric way to do things. Thank you.